Imagine being born into a world of mammoth predators and untamed wilderness. That was the reality of a child 1.9 million years ago. In Southern Africa, in a small cave nestled in the heart of the prehistoric wilderness, a newborn baby had just arrived into the world, bringing great joy to his tribe, one belonging to the species Australopithecus sapida. We'll call this baby Zulu. The process of his birth can be described as super easy because as part of the Australopithecus sabida species, the fetal head and shoulder breadth have ample space to pass through even the tightest dimensions of the maternal birth canal. In our times today though, things are pretty different. The modern pelvis is bigger and more shaped, which is necessary for walking straight. This, along with the larger size of a baby's head, makes for a tight fit. Coming back to Zulu, being born during a time when survival was the ultimate challenge, his journey began to unfold. As he grew, so did his curiosity. Alongside other young ones of his tribe, he explored the great landscapes, learned to identify edible plants, mimic animal calls, and craft simple tools. Zulu's father, a skilled craftsman, imparted the art of tool making to his son. Each strike of stone against stone echoed the legacy of survival through innovation. The time came for him to face the rite of passage, a challenge that would prove his readiness to contribute to the tribe's well-being. He started a thrilling hunt under the seasoned hunter's guidance. His heart raced as he faced the challenges of tracking, patience, and teamwork. His journey was not without its trials. He faced wild beasts, experienced harsh weather, and learned to adapt to the ever-changing landscape. Through it all, though, he discovered strength within himself and the importance of unity. His journey came full circle as he became a valued member of the tribe. His skills as a hunter and gatherer contributed to the well-being of his people. Even though this is only a fictional story, inspired by what might have been the journey of a young early ancestor. In this video, we'll follow the lives of prehistoric children exploring the extraordinary world. Stay with us to uncover remarkable insights of their birth and death and the fascinating parallels and contrasts with the lives of children today, revealing the timeless bond that connects us through centuries. Let's start with the scientific discovery of hominid babies. The study of hominid babies and infants based on fossilized remains has provided valuable insights into the early stages of human evolution. While it's essential to note that the direct evidence of hominid infants is limited, there have been significant discoveries and findings related to the development and characteristics of hominid babies. Here are a few notable scientific discoveries. The Tuang child, discovered in 1924 by Raymond Dart, who identified the fossilized skull of a young Australopithecus africanus in Tuang, South Africa. The Tuang child, believed to be around three years old, provided crucial information about early hominid brain development. It helped establish that hominids walked upright even before their brains reached the size of modern humans. Homo naledi infants were discovered in the year 2015 at the Rising Star Cave system in South Africa. Alongside a significant number of other Homo naledi fossils, the discovery included the remains of infants and juveniles buried, shedding light on the social behavior, burial practices, and development of Homo naledi. This finding raised intriguing questions about the complexity of social structures in early hominids. Earlier on, we spoke about the facts that childbearing for our ancestors was easier than what we have today. Now, here is the scientific discovery of the process of childbearing. The pelvic remains of Australopithecus afarensis individuals, such as the famous Lucy, gave us insight into the childbearing of hominids. Scientists have proposed that Australopithecus afrinensis, our progenitor, may have given birth in a manner that combined chimpanzee and human birth-child customs. They discussed how this discovery provided insights into the development of human birth and how it cleared the path for the development of massive brains. What's even more intriguing is that the researchers discovered that the baby afrinensis birth canal fitted tightly. This suggests that labor problems may have arisen in their species, much like in modern humans, necessitating the involvement of a midwife. That said, there is an interesting connection between their cave burials and childbirth practices. 
Some archaeological sites reveal intentional burial practices, suggesting a cultural understanding of death and, perhaps, childbirth. The presence of grave goods or specific burial positions may offer indirect clues about the rituals or beliefs related to childbirth in ancient hominid societies. Notable examples include the Sanghil burial site in Russia, the Kwafze cave in Israel, the Shandahar cave in Iraq, the Atapurka site in Spain, and the Teshiktash site in Uzbekistan. While direct evidence of ancient childbirth practices is limited, researchers use a multidisciplinary approach combining paleoanthropology, archaeology, and comparative anatomy to provide insights into early hominids' reproductive experiences. These studies contribute to our understanding of the challenges and adaptions associated with childbirth in our evolutionary history. Now, fast forward a couple minutes after Zulu's birth. What food did he and other babies eat growing up? Well, milk may have been one of the first things they had. As fellow mammals, these babies were breastfed from birth. And astonishingly, chemical markers in their growing teeth allow researchers to directly observe the proof of this. These results showed that, in line with current trends, babies started eating different meals as early as four months old and continued until they were over seven months old. Similarly, in several customary and nomadic communities, nursing persisted far into early childhood and, in a single instance, possibly until the child turned four years old. However, for one child whose bones were discovered in Belgium, the chemical signature ends so suddenly at the age of slightly over a year suggesting that the mother may have experienced an unfortunate event. This may have been a challenging period for health, even if most Neanderthal children were weaned somewhat more gradually. Disturbances in tooth enamel deposits are another dental characteristic that is indicative of a major sickness, infection, or malnourishment. Although the exact causes of the disruptions in individual Neanderthals are unknown, they are most common in children between the ages of three and five. This may have something to do with the time at which breastfeeding ends, since milk probably continues to support the immune system even in older children. Its removal may have increased the likelihood of illness. Overall though, it appears from recent research on damaged enamel samples that Neanderthal children didn't suffer from noticeably higher levels of stress than early Homo sapien communities. Now, let's talk about the dangers Zulu and other kids faced. Well, prehistoric children faced a variety of dangers and challenges that were inherent to the environments and lifestyles of their time. In environments where large predators existed, prehistoric children would have been at risk of attacks because of their size and vulnerability. They may have needed constant supervision to avoid encounters with dangerous animals. They may have likely faced the risk of accidents and injuries associated with daily activities such as hunting, gathering, and playing. Balls, cuts, burns, and other mishaps were hazards without modern safety measures. Limited medical knowledge and healthcare resources in prehistoric times would have made prehistoric children susceptible to various infectious diseases. Lack of hygiene, contaminated water sources, and close living could contribute to the spread of illnesses. Maternal mortality during childbirth and high rates of infant mortality were challenges in prehistoric times. Lack of medical knowledge and the assistance likely increased the risk associated with childbirth and the survival of newborns. As we slowly draw the curtain to a close, let's see some similarities and differences between prehistoric children and modern-day kids. Prehistoric children were believed to be part of family units, living within social structures that provided care, support, and protection. The importance of communal living amongst them and group support in child rearing is suggested by the presence of extended family groups in hunter-gatherer societies. Some similarities can be observed in that prehistoric children likely depended on caregivers for food, protection and guidance, much like modern children. The extended period of childhood dependency is considered a characteristic of human evolution, allowing for the development of complex cognitive and social abilities. Additionally, archaeological evidence suggests that prehistoric societies, like modern cultures, cared for and honored their deceased children, indicating shared cultural practices. However, differences arise in the lifestyle and environment of prehistoric children compared to modern babies. Factors such as exposure to natural elements, available resources, and cultural practices varied significantly. The diet and nutrition of prehistoric children also differed influenced by the types of food available and cultural practices related to breastfeeding and weaning. Health and disease patterns in prehistoric children were shaped by different challenges, 
including exposure to infectious diseases, limited medical care, and environmental stresses. Moreover, cultural and social influences, as well as technological advancements, played roles in shaping the lives of prehistoric children in ways distinct from modern babies. Looking back at the life of a prehistoric child, we've learned that they had a different way of being born, grew up quite fast, and had to be tough to survive. They lived in a world with big animals and tough weather, where they needed their family and friends to help them get by. What if you were a prehistoric child? How would you handle their world? And what adventures would you have had?